Okay, this is this is a second try. I was just, I just almost watched the whole thing, and I can't believe how difficult it is for me to speak simply. Uh, and I kept I kept hearing I kept hearing entity two entities and two entities. And I, I I said to myself, why didn't you use the word will? It's like two uh, two wills or two will forces that exist in a single intelligence. In our own, in the, in the same mind. But in any case, uh, so to explain these two, um, these two different willpowers or will consciousnesses in our in our human intelligence, you can understand. Well, this is one way to under, to identify them to understand. If you think of when animals raise their offspring and the little duck takes its little ducklings onto the lake. Uh, they never let go of their ducklings. It's just the, the raw, ultimately most sensible thing. The parent does not leave the ducklings until the duckling wants to take off. And then they automatically kind of don't pursue the duckling, right? And all animals kind of do this, right? They they are they obsessively stay with their young until they leave. Or sometimes more evolved animals, they they form clans and they hang around and for life. Um, but to understand the difference with man, humankind, and animals, think of that example. Think of the little duckling, the duck that doesn't let go of its ducklings. And how we reason and apply things that we construct as um, philosophical or civil or social norms of intelli intelligent norms or um, uh, the ways in which we figure society can work in a logical sense. And so, by the you know by the time our kids are ten, they start leaving and so we teach them responsibility and curfew and so forth and these are our ideas that are logical intelligence this other will the one that pushes forward in evolution is uh acting uh is 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 is, uh, is creating uh, and then we we invented a car and we uh you know give our teenager rules and they go out and they lie and they they have ideas about what emancipation and coming of age is about and they end up having a car accident because they drank too much and so we fail be because our logical intelligence creates precociously beyond the the level in which our base uh, will of intelligence which is the little duckling family that doesn't let go of its ducklings until they're ready to fly off. Uh, what, what was I saying? It doesn't, we feel because there, there's a vast separation. There's a gap between these two polarized uh, will capacities of intelligence. I don't, obviously I'm, I'm struggling to come, uh, come up with terms, and terminology and words and, and simplification. So I, I can see it very geometrically, like a model, like building an architectural model. And if you can imagine it that way, it's a lot easier. If you, you see you see a relationship between, uh, and it's not a theory. It's really something that you can see. In fact, they identify it because all our high inventions of logic and reasoning that end up uh, causing problems because we are always also standing on what nature normally has us think, and that is also a will. Uh, one of is, is a form of will because we say, "Hey, uh, this doesn't seem." It's more of an intuitive crying out that you know, and and there and we live in this dichotomy. We we kind of don't want our children to ever leave us, right? In a sense. Um, and, and then some societies have been able to affect the other intelligence more pro profusely or more um, ex ex um, expansively. Like, for example, 
we have societies where children leave their home right away and they go and work and you know they don't see their parents ever again they put them in an old age home and then we have societies where there's a strong bond so the between children and their parents until they're old and they end up taking care of their parents when they're older and so there is humanity is basically represented by a play between these two polarized wills of intelligence but they can easily be defined as one really just being grounded in the immovable eternally always true design of nature we're never going to go wrong because that is how our physiology uh, was made by evolution and what is what is made through evolution through millions of generations will always be the best for us in a sense um, or, or we're all, we'll always be uh, can never be wrong in other words will always be true and will be the the abode of what is healthiest and most healing and nurturing will all these things that are um, not brave uh, not um, audacious launchings of, of exploration of, of trying new and discovery things of our intelligent will of this willful of this other will of intelligence they will always have all the things that have to do with coming back to ourselves and finding the, the most organic and, and true to human form healing as opposed to some radical chemotherapy that you know we try things and yeah because they're never separate part of that part of one goes Part of nature, the, the, the primitive evolutionary intuitive intelligence, is always present with the exploratory, um, logical, high reasoning, scientific intelligence, logic, let's call it. But it's not what it leads. It's not led by it. So it will always sort of walk into muddy waters because it tends to separate from... Um, you know, basically, you could also look at it in a chart. I thought of making a, a chart, a model, where you see one line, the, the progression throughout a lifetime or throughout the, the existence of humankind as a line of progression that is just a line of evolution, you know, where you first we're like on four legs and then we stand up and, and we're walking erect and that is a line that goes like this. And then we have this force that wants to do this. So we're already wanting to make it to the stars. We're already wanting to, you know, if it were up to that intelligence, we would be flying around, uh, you know, doing wacky, crazy, outlandish things. We just, we have that much capacity, but it diverges and it, it always fails as it goes away from this other line. It always fails. And so we collapse, we have wars, we have, uh, oil spills, we have, you know, uh, medication that uh, pollutes the, 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 the population, we have beliefs, political beliefs, ideological beliefs that go on, carry on, carry on until we realize they started causing problems and those are trickier because everything that's conceptual, philosophical, morality, spiritual, scripture and all uh, this other the, the sort of the literature, conceptual, uh, intellectual part of, uh, of, 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 of this intelligence, of the logical, high reasoning willed intelligence, has, uh, it seems to be more motivated by the things that are about our natural desires for a healthy social quality of life. But it's also exploratory, so it does invent things, and, and we see that now a lot in, in, in a lot of ideology, especially around sexuality, and, and especially around sexuality, for some reason we get really crazy, we just try to think we can do anything, and it's amazing, we have no connection at all with uh, the, what will perpetuate, what will eternally be healthier for us, which is to stay to our form. That's never going to change, and so we, like I said, we still haven't realized these, these two ent these two willful entities of intelligence, are have a relationship in our singular 
mind uh, because you know when we do then we'll realize that there is a relationship and that they have to um, one serves the other and it would behoove us to use our sophisticated logical high scientific intelligence to serve uh, even if it, we can get fancy, sophisticated, crazy, you know, so futuristic, whatever, it doesn't mean that we all of a sudden need to go back to the cave. It means that we always have to keep a constant reference that the further we explore away from nature, the more prone and tendencies and instances there will be of dissatisfying the natural form and creating anxieties and voids and mistakes and so by maintaining a constant awareness of the failing tendency of the higher intelligence what we produce will not be the result of ignoring these two polarized parts of our brain it will be uh, uh, we will produce a human civilization that will be our handling of this relationship and so the world will look completely different uh, and we will always have a perpetually unstable but you know it's almost like it's almost like um, somebody has to like mankind was having to walk a tightrope and you didn't know that you have to work balance and the cord or something and you just launch out and you know we launch out and we think everything is fine it's just us and the cord and the air and we start walking on the on the on the on the tension cord and we fall we fall every time we almost make it to the other side and from maybe sometime we made it to the other side and we ran back and we fell again it's like we have no consciousness of the of the difficulty until the day that we realized Oh, no, wait a second, there's something happening here. There's a cord and there's my limitation of balance. And so when we do, then human civilization will be uh, walking on the cord, but we will get good at balancing ourselves and we'll be successful every time, although it'll, uh, it will always be work. <laughs> so that's basically what perpetual instability means. It will always be work, but it will always be good, and the, the overall result will be necessarily satisfactory because we will always be close to what fulfills the soul of our natural um, will, desire created by evolution and our eternal truth, which is our physiology as it, cre it was created by evolution. Except that our, our other, the other side of our intelligence um will will have a, a will know exactly what it's trying to do it will it just won't be out of control okay so this is another way of saying the same thing and also i realized uh i left out something that is also interesting another um analogy for and it could be the origin perhaps of this or yeah it could be part of the uh, sort of find part of, part of its origin or the greater part of its origin may have to do with this that what we're talking about is the individual this is also an important concept in itself the individual intelligence or the leadership within each one of us the leadership just says i'm i'm doing this and i'm i'm going to jump first and i'm I'll take care of this for everybody and for myself, you know, the, the individual intelligence that is not questioned, that resolves a problem without people interfering, for example, and the collective mind. The collective mind is what you're thinking with the, pre what you're thinking along with the presence in that thought of your collective integration. So there's, there's a part of our mind that is reasoning through our awareness of collectivity that we're aware that we're part of others and you know they're all mingled the thoughts that it's not that one from one camp come some thoughts and from another camp come other thoughts it's it's kind of the same mass but there is an there is a 
collective capacity of reasoning and there is an individual capacity of reasoning. And it's easier to um, to visualize it if we think of the structure of society and why we result in having having had patriarchy, the father and family, society of men, whatever, um, or you know, or make matriarchy instead and have leaders in society. Um, and one of the difficulties, again, the same perpetuating of uh, perpetual uh, of failure and get, uh, reoccurs here for and uh, explain differently. If uh, when um, you lead a nation or a family or a company or a, an institution as a single person, and usually all institutions are ultimately there's a president, there's a general manager, there's one or two people who are who are at the head of, of things, right? Um, resolve or come up with a solution. You know, problems are created. Maybe salaries aren't fair, or uh, you don't hire the right people for that company, or you don't uh, designate the right people for, the, or or you create institutions that are unnecessary or, or wrongly configured for that government, or you forget about the people that are hungry, you forget about the this or that, or it, it doesn't work out. You know, the, basically all our systems or administration organization systems of that come about from leadership, whether we're talking about a company, a government, institutions, the structure of institutions, have their failures just like human civilization does. Obviously governments do. We have, every country has problems with their, they don't, they benefit more, they benefit more a smaller group of people and a larger group of people have uh, more mediocre type situations or intense problems or very heavy problems in a large number of people. So all governments are imperfect and failing, just like this, these dynamics, uh, the, the dynamics from our polarization of, of intelligence that I was explaining before, except that we can explain it through the relationship between uh, the individual mind and the collective mind, and which means that it would be more successful for us if we could find a way of leading, for example, a country or a, a city or a, a large company or an institution through a collective thinking mind. So. The collective thinking mind would be the mind that thinks that never separates people. That's always thinking housing, housing, how many are we? Where are they? Boom. Everybody has a house. Uh, now, I'm not saying that we need to have a socialist system where government builds houses for people, but I'm talking about the creation of, of systems of distribution. And that, if there's an economy, Money is a good invention because it liquidates, it liquidates material and it re, it, it, re, it has it reemerge somewhere else. It's it's like a the ultimate moving company, <laughs> money. It's not, we think that it's about I don't know what power or something, but you know, but in reality the power, the great the great virtue of money is that it's it can. Um, zip things into a file and then you know you can sell your house put it in your pocket and then boom make a new house where you wherever you move uh that's the uh, the, the physical virtue of, of money so it is a useful amazing thing uh except that the way it's handled it's not serving like it were a service like water or electricity it's we are all sort of, uh, the, the world is uh, entranced, uh, <laughs> enraptured by it. And, and everybody's losing their minds because it seems they feel it's their only lifeboat. <laughs> and it's what will save you from the sufferings of existence. And, and so people guard it jealously and compete for it. And 
You know, it's not treated like something functional. It's treated as some kind of elixir that will better our our emotional state and not and keep us safe from from peril. In the subconscious uh, psyche of fears and suspicion and and um, and uh, you know selfishness and all this part, the lower part of our which is it happens to be happens to be part of our primitive in, intuitive evolutionary mind uh you know this is it's not oh is the 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 high reasoning intelligent mind is not always wrong clumsy stupid wrong uh, or it's actually means well it's like a foolish good guy that always gets it wrong um the part and it, it actually because it actually has philosophies it's you know uh be generous be compassionate it's trying to teach upon our lesser sides our darker selfish suspicious fearful parts of our uh primitive mind um but like i said it doesn't it always fails it doesn't know how to how to handle it <laughs> you know it doesn't know how to propose the correct solution ever it, it, because it's not thinking as a collective we have we're in the middle we're the it's actually three entities if you, we want to make it more uh complete and the mystery of of the future is with is is, is us within the middle of these two willfulnesses in our intelligence the one in the middle isn't really a will as it is a constant will a constant will forever be going forward and so we take with us the part of our primitive mind and the capacities of our logical intelligent analytical mind and we we so there is a third but it's not doing much it's like the child you know it's the, it needs to be taken care of by the mother and the father so yeah if you want to look at the big more in a more esoteric or spiritual capacity this whole discourse we're always talking about three entities um and everything is explained through threes and every, all threes are explained by the 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 forces of of two so like the whole existence of of uh the existential condition is all about threes and twos but three is always the case um and the one in the middle talks about can talk about these two polarity extremes but we're not there yet because we haven't brought god which is nothing which is his which is its absence to the center to where we are which means we own our predicament we see what is happening we have the um the high logical reasoning, foolish, uh, you know, very capable, very intelligent, uh, willfulness of intelligence that wants to do wants to do right by the collective and by evolution, but doesn't know. It always gets it wrong because that's not uh, its forte. Kind of, it's serving, supposed to serve it, but it doesn't even know how. And we have to decide that for it, for one thing. So it's almost like coming, well, I'm having a, a, an epiphany, I'm having a moment right now. I hope I can finish, I can finish this video. <laughs> but um, the primitive mind is also always going to be wiser as far as I don't feel right about what the explorative intelligent will is doing, an analytical, inventive, high capacity of my mind is doing. I feel it's wrong and we have to listen to it, but it's also the one that's going to say, I'm not sure. I don't know if I can trust that. Um, there's some danger is going to come from somewhere always because that's how we evolve. That's the physical base of our primitive intuitive mind. Also, that's, it's like the body that came with this earth, right? So it's always going to be truer and wiser. And it's also going to be sort of the one that's no i don't know you're pulling too strong you know what are you doing i don't i don't want to go there and so 
we really have to if by us knowing that what they're both about this one the the logical intelligence the, the one to say no i'll figure something out so that you don't feel afraid anymore i'll design a world in which security and and trust abounds and that's we try to do that we try to create literature and moral teachings and um, understand the human mind through psychology but of course we never get it right because we've never been in control we've never been in the driver's seat so this theorem basically puts mankind in the driver's seat and it doesn't really change anything except that except that it, by doing that it makes us aware of this polarity and the relationship in between so hopefully this will complement the one I made before in some way hopefully okay